Welcome back. We left off, as Blackboard shows us on announcements page, uh, halfway through presentation 10 on slide 19. But uh, I had to kind of go back and check just to make sure, you know, where exactly are we at. Because I work on this stuff, and then sometimes this numbering changes. But I don't think I've changed it down that low over the weekend. Um, <clears throat> is it more helpful if I turn out the lights? Yeah, you want to hit the lights, somebody? Perfect. And feel free to take naps. All right, so uh, we were talking about variables in Go and the zero value. And so uh, the zero value is uh, basically, you know, let's see if we got an example here. Um, zero value is like if you declare something and you don't assign a value to it, that's your zero value. So if I declare an int but I don't assign a value to that, then that int is going to have a zero value of zero. Likewise, if I did a float, it'd be 0.0, .0 or a string, it'd be just empty strings. And then for pointers, functions, all that other stuff, it's nil. And so that's just a concept that we'll see again. And particularly when we look at using make versus new, uh, we'll see, you know, that comes back into play, but it's just a concept that's good to be aware of. Uh, so the next thing that is good to look at is scope, and there's a couple different levels of scope, and anybody who knows anything about Go, aka people who are at the boot camp, or Daniel, feel free to jump in, but this is my understanding of scope in uh, Golang. So you have basically the whole thing, global universe, but then you have package scope, and then inside packages you could have files, and then inside your files, you have functions. And then inside your functions, you could have curly braces. Right? So pretty much right the way you think about it. And so if we were to declare a variable inside of a function, that variable is only going to have scope inside that function. And likewise, if we're inside a function and we just open, open up some curly braces and declare a variable in there, then just only inside those curly braces inside that function right is their scope so let's take a look at how scope works so here's package level scope I declare my package I have my import statement before I even have any functions I declare a variable I cannot use the shorthand notation of colon equals I have to use var x int I declare int what is the zero value of that int going to be zero do you guys want to verify that you want to see it in action yeah sure so uh, so this is package level scope, so let's just come into WebStorm and we'll open up the Golang training. Close. And uh, let me look for scope. In, 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 in conditional switch, for loop, remainder, where? Number four. Number four, oh my gosh. We're all the way back there. All right, so here, here is uh, that same one. And then uh, let me go into there and uh, one, and then it's called scope, go run scope, and uh, it's firing up, first time, let's take a second, zero, I don't know if you can see that, I've got like micro screen, right, so that, uh, that's the zero value of that amp, likewise, if we'd made this a string, and that's kind of interesting, right, it doesn't like show us two, you know, quotations with nothing in them, it's just a uh, nothing, right? And likewise, if we'd had a float, 64, uh, that's just showing us zero, so cool. All right. So uh, let me make this bigger so you can see it a little bit better. So here we have uh, three files. And uh, we've got model, controller, and main. And under model, and uh, model, if you talk about MVC models, generally your data controller is connecting your data to how it's shown. And then, um, you know, and so that'd be, mo and then view is how you show it when you hear about model view controller. So model, I just named it that because, hey, here's my data. And so I'm um, declaring a variable sheriff string setting boss hog to it, so declaring sheriff and then assigning boss hog, and that's initialization, that whole statement. And then, um, and then in the next one, I have a function sheriff which returns that variable sheriff. 
and then down below I'm calling my function share. So if you learn this thing about capitalization and go, and uh, I would not be able to call <clears throat> lowercase share right here, right? Because this has package level scope right there. So this could this variable is only accessible inside package characters. Uh, this one, this function, because it has an uppercase first letter, that's basically public in Golang. And so that uppercase first letter says this is available outside of the package. So any package that imports the package characters, like this one does right here, uh, can use this, this variable share. And, and this is uh, uh, what the docs recommend for, you know, if you're going to have a getter, you know, like, oh, go get something, you know, you don't, you don't, you don't call it get sheriff or anything like that. It's just, you know, lowercase for the private variable, uppercase for the public function. And, uh, and they're both called sheriff, but that kind of knowing that is how you make the distinction. And so uh, I call it, and, you know, it will print out boss hog. Um, so that's, uh, that's package level scope for the, this variable. And then I guess this would be universe scope for sheriff. Is that the way you think about that? Yeah. It's just like everything, right? Um, so here I'm trying to call that lowercase sheriff, and it's not accessible because this is only available in package uh, sheriff. And, uh, and so here I capitalized sheriff name, and now I can access that, right? So that's got universe scope. So that should make sense. Give you a second. Take that in. And, uh, and here's a package level scope again. So package main, import format, and the variable uh, x string boss hog, right? And so that uh, x is available across uh, multiple functions, right? And uh, this would be uh, invalid. Scope of variable x is within the function in which it is declared. So I declared it inside the function. So the scope is only inside this function right here. And I can't use it there. That's pretty straightforward, right? And uh, this is invalid. Imports have a file scope. So in this uh, file one, I import format. And even though these are both in package main, uh, that doesn't mean I could use format in this other file, so imports have a file scope. You guys missed the best stuff. I already gave away the Mercedes and the BMW. All I've got left now are free sunglasses. <laughs> we did get free sunglasses at boot camp, by the way. Because <laughs> it was summer. And free hot sauce. And free hot sauce and free racquetball head sweat headbands. Those are awesome. Yeah, I know. For that reason alone, right? Uh, well, I'm, we're always trying to organize stuff, and that's a really good question, actually. Uh, and so uh, there's another, you know, depending upon if there's grant funds available, we'll be doing it next summer, but it's looking fairly good. I'd say more in favor than not. And, uh, and then we might have enough money left to do a couple of weekends later in November, which would be cool. And then there's GDG Dev Fest. Uh, and I sent out an email to a lot of y'all, so hopefully some of you got it. But if you didn't, you could just Google GDG Dev Fest, and that's October 17th, so you want to make sure you save the date for that because uh, we're going to have employees from Google are going to come down. I'm not quite sure who. I doubt it's going to be the CEO uh, or the owners. But, you know, they'll have somebody there or a couple of people, and, uh, and it'll just be a day of Googly madness where we learn all things Google and there'll be workshops. And it's a good chance to learn some stuff and network and you could even meet people from Google. And if you want to volunteer, uh, you could add that to your resume, right? And then it's like, oh, sweet, you're involved with GDG and you volunteered. And you could, you know, when you volunteer, you can meet the people at GDG and, uh, and you know, start doing other stuff. So if you want to volunteer, the person you want to contact is Rio Waller, and uh, her email address is uh, Rio, uh, what the heck is it? Eh. Her email address is Rio, Rio Waller at gmail.com. All right, R-I-O-W-A-L-L-E-R. Where did we leave off? So uh, function level scope, yeah, didn't we just see that? No, that's the format package. Uh, you can't do this. So in JavaScript, you have hoisting, 
which you know brings all your function declarations and variable declarations up to the top, but not your assignments. You can't do that in in Go, so it runs sequentially, top to bottom. Um, and uh, and here we have uh, you know again function level scope, so that's pretty straightforward, right? That doesn't make sense either, so that's invalid. And here we have curly uh, braces level scope. So I wouldn't be able to access uh, X outside those curly back braces, so that doesn't work. So uh, you can learn more about scope by uh, clicking on this resource, and uh, let's see where that takes us. This is Caleb's book, and he talks a lot about scope in there. And there's a fair amount of little detail here right from the Go doc, doc language specification. And he goes through and he sort of details all of those, uh, all those different levels and even a little bit more. But, you know, pretty straightforward, but also a good concept to be aware of. So the main, one of the main takeaways is just this idea of capitalization, public and private, and you guys have heard that a bazillion times already. So uh, here, you know, is that capitalized deal. We saw that. And, uh, and there, this code here, uh, what's going on with that? We have uh, sheriff name, so that's, uh, you know, accessible outside. And then we have package characters, and we're returning uh, sheriff name, and then we set sidekick is equal to Roscoe here inside of this function, right? And now I'm trying to call character sidekick. And it's like, what? Why is that not not, a, not working? What's the scope of side, sidekick? Function. Yeah, just this function, right? So even though it's capitalized, no, it's still inside that function. It needed to be declared outside of a function and then it's successful. And that's what the notes say there. So just playing with it and seeing what happens. So here, you know, uh, that does work. And that's pretty much the same as what we saw before with Sheriff and making a getter, quote unquote, getter for Sheriff. Scope on side K is package scope. Yeah, so. That's lowercase and not accessible. So you got an exercise there for your homework, which you can do uh, working with scope. And then another thing, you guys need a breather? You got it? You want to read the exercise? I'm just clicking through. If you need me to ever slow down, just say slow down. Otherwise, I'm just going to ram ramble on through this stuff. Do you have a question? Yeah, awesome. Um, yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm going to probably go and keep saying this. But last semester, we had that nice old list of homework yeah, assignments yeah. and it would reference what we were supposed to be doing. Are we going to have anything like that or do we need to dig through the presentation? Yeah, so right now the way I'm setting it up is like in Blackboard you have your assignments and it says like presentation seven exercises, right? And so you go to presentation seven and just look at the different exercises. Okay. Yeah, but yeah, it's not that hard. You guys have, you know, internet probably. Probably. <laughs> Yeah. So I, I actually uh, put a couple of just straight in, but I think I'll change those two further down. All right. So blank identifier. It's for a variable you don't want to use. So uh, if you don't use, if you uh, you know uh, get a variable and you if you have a variable and you don't use it in Go, that's an error. It's just like you know, hey, why is this variable here? You're not using it. Error. All right. Makes sense. And so if, uh, if there's ever something like, well, you know, I just, I need that there, but I'm not going to use it, you put a blank space in for the variable name. So right here, that's invalid code. I've declared and assigned, initialized C, and C is uh, not being used. And so uh, I could, instead of having that, I could put an underscore there. So even though that's still part of the statement and everything, um, right, that's now valid code because I'm telling Go, look, I know that something should be assigned a variable there, but I'm just throwing it away. And I still want this other stuff because I might maybe might come back and use that. But it's just letting go now that we know it's up. And so we'll see that with uh, this, uh, this, I don't know, what would you call this? This, uh, this, range. yeah, range, but it's a, I don't know, this is like a, a thing that you use in Go. I can't think of the right phrase, but... Yeah, it's a loop. And so it's for uh, looping over an iterable object, right? And so if we have a slice or a map, 
um, then we can loop over all of the data, and we do that with range. And it has two returns, and it returns a key and a value. So for key value, colon equals range, some iteratable, and then you could print out the key and the value or do whatever you want with it. Um, you know, that's a phrase you should commit to memory right there. And so right here, we're throwing away the key, and we're just using the value. If we only wanted the key, we could have just put key and actually not assigned a value, but that's, that's in the docs. Um, but, you know, that's it right there, throwing away key, not using key. So a little bit of review. Uh, colon equals is like the big takeaway, the shorthand notation for variables and scope and capitalization. That's a big takeaway. And then you got a bunch of review questions, which you should take a look at. And that is all, and which you will answer, right, in your homework. That's all presentation 10. Questions? Keep rolling. Keep rolling.